In this video, we'll demonstrate how to perform a multiple regression analysis in Excel and where to find important information. So the type of problem we are thinking about here is where we have a explanatory variable, uh, sorry, where we have observations, so we have 12 observations for weight, height, and the sex of these 12 respondents. So what we're interested in is a regression, let's call it yi, is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1i plus beta 2 times x2i plus an error term. And here the yi is weight, so that's the y. Height we'll label as x1 and the information on the sex is going to be x2. So how we're going to use that we'll see in a in a moment and we want to estimate that regression so let's do that we'll go to our trusted data analysis tool we'll find the uh, regression we'll specify what our dependent variable range is it's this one I always include the title and then you'd have to tick labels here, but then that makes the display a little easier. And now we have two explanatory variables and we highlight the two variables, okay, height and sex. So let's do that and uh, tell Excel where we want the output. Let's put it in here. Now when I click OK, we'll get an error message. Okay. Excel is complaining, hey, input range contains non-numeric data. And indeed that's true because that information here on the sex of the respondents is coded up as text, female and male. And when we do regression analysis, everything has to be coded as numbers. So this is why we define this, what we call a dummy variable here. And it contains exactly the same information as sex. We called it a male dummy. And all the respondents, which are male, have a one in that column, whereas all the female respondents have a zero in that column. So it contains exactly the same information, just as numbers. We'll have to put that information next to the height information, because we have to highlight all the explanatory variables as a block. You'll see that in a moment. So let's go back. So let's just show this again. So actually now miraculously, it's the male variable, which is now the X2. And that is exactly how we will be doing this. So let's go to data analysis, regression. Let's see the dependent variable is still coded up correctly. The input range, where is the input range? So we want this. Okay, and the output range the same, labels is ticked. Let's click OK. And here we have our regression output. So let's see where we are going with, with this. Okay. So the... Um, that has, doesn't align anymore, so I have to rub this away. So this was our y variable, that is the x1 variable, and that is the x2 variable. So this is the model we estimated, and here's our regression output. Let's highlight a few important aspects in that output. Firstly, we can see how many observations we used. That is our n. Then we're interested in these coefficients, alpha, beta 1, beta 2. They are unknown population coefficients, so we don't know them, but we will be using, or we have used, the sample information to get sample estimates for them. And these sample estimates are here in that column, the coefficients column. We're having three coefficients, we're getting three sample estimates. So what we have here is y i hat, so I'm writing down our basically our regression line. The sample estimate for alpha is 9.9 .9 plus the sample estimate for beta 1, that is the coefficient to x1, which is height, which is here, is 2.1 times 
x1i plus the sample estimate for beta 2 for the male dummy variable is 13.7. 13.7 times x2i. Now, since we're looking at the estimate here, we'll not have an error term here. This is our line of best fit. And we'll label this sample estimate, the 9.9, .9, we often label that as A. That 2.1 would be B1, and that 13.7, that's our sample estimate, B2. Now we know these are all random draws from a random distribution, because had we drawn a different sample, we would get different uh, sample estimates. To express that variability here, Excel has nicely calculated the standard errors for these estimates. Okay, they're in these blue box here. So the standard errors are, let me put that in parentheses because often we will, they will be presented in parentheses. 42.2, as I'm rounding to one only here, 0 0.8 and 7.4. These are the standard errors okay, of A, B1 or B2. So using this, Excel continues on and gives us some extra information here. The T stat and the P value. These values relate to a hypothesis test. And let me write it down for one of these coefficients. Let me write it down for beta one. What they test is the co the hypothesis, null hypothesis that beta one is equal to zero and that's typically that is an interesting coefficient because if beta 1 was 0 that would mean that height plays no role in explaining variation in weight against the alternative hypothesis that it is unequal to 0 so it's a two-sided test and so for beta 1 we're looking at this row here you can see the t statistic which we use so that the t stat here is 2.6298 and the p-value of that test is 0 0.02, 0 0.0274. So at an alpha of 5%, for instance, we would reject that null hypothesis. At an alpha of 1%, we would not reject that null hypothesis. And lastly, Excel also calculates a confidence interval. Let's stick with the uh, let's stick with the uh, um, beta 1 coefficient okay our sample estimate is this one here 2.1 that is b1 and we're having a confidence interval 95 percent confidence interval um, that interval is from 0.3 to 3.9 basically okay now lastly the last piece of information we want to look at this sort of analysis of variance here the SST, the total variation, that is basically a measure of the variance of the dependent variable, is this one here. Then we have the SSR, that is this value here, that is the amount of the variation explained by variation of the explanatory variable. That's the SSR. And then the amount of variation that is not explained and basically captured by the error term is the SSE, that is this value here. Now for you, you can use these values to then calculate the R squared of the regression, which in this case is around 82%. So this is the most important information you can extract from this regression output in Excel in a multiple regression. If you had more than two variables, you could do that. You would just have one, two, and then the next column of information as well, and you would highlight it, and you would just get more coefficients.